two men walk into the octagon, only one will walk out. Well, unless you count the referee. And then if a whole bunch of people jump in, so a big old melee, hello. Welcome to Octagon St. Laveau. I'm your hostess, Betty St. Laveau. On this show, we talk about MMA, UFC history. I try and make it quite clear. I'm just a novice. Um, I'm realizing that it's almost been maybe a year since I delved into um, MMA territory, and it has been a very thrilling ride. Um, not filled with heartache and pain, but I'm sure if I take up karate, there will be plenty of that, all right? So um, most, if not all, of these fighters have studied some form of motai, jiu-jitsu, akito, karate, or judo, or Greco-Roman wrestling in their life, um, which totally impresses me. And it makes any fist fight and on a movie look either really, really fake or overdone when you actually look at what these gentlemen and ladies do in the octagon. All right, so um, I've got two breakdowns here. I've got the breakdown of uh, Anderson and um, Adesanya uh, f fight, um, which I'm surprised at my notes. They're, I don't think that they're going to translate really well to the to my camera. But Israel Adesanya won the fight, and um, um, Israel kept looking tired at some point, and Anderson was looking strong. Uh, Adesanya was kicking a lot. He got off to a st slow str start, and then. He had a strong first kick. It looked like a, what, a hook kick. So there was some pressure coming from him. And then Anderson started taking advantage. I wish I had the date of this. This looks like February 10th, 2019. So it's, it's was some time ago. It's been a minute since I did an episode of this show. But what I want to say is that I, as I was looking at the fight, um, I decided to look at it again because I was busy taking notes. The ending was so cool. Um, Adesanya won. They both bowed to one another in the ring. They were so respectful. The fans reached out to grab Anderson, a uh, crafty veteran, they were calling him. And um, uh, I just love, I just love MMA. I, I love the rituals. I love how my MMA professors, such as uh, Alpaca Thesaurus, uh, Weasel, um, not so much Mind Smash, but Weasel and Cranach, they uh, explain to you that sometimes the fighters, especially Alpaca, will say, when two fighters are fighting, give one to take one. It's like a dance, you know? Uh, the only person to quote Alpaca's the source, who doesn't really do the dances, Mr. Tony Ferguson, El Kukai, who, um, uh, he turns up the heat. He'll just crank up the heat. He doesn't care who he's fighting with. So watching this veteran, uh, Anderson Silva, one of the greatest fighters ever lived, and Israel Adesanya, a young up and comma, so, so, so much respect to one another, makes me, even more intrigued and entranced with MMA and UFC. Right on. Okay, so um, I'll look at this fight again. I think that I probably did a pretty good job with this breakdown, but um, I need a little bit more work on it. Another breakdown I worked on was the John Jones and Anthony Smith fight that happened a couple weeks ago. Mott's, uh, March 2nd, I think that was. And um, John Jones was kicking right off the block. Anthony rejoined with a str strong leg kick. Jones came back at him. Jones came back with a strong leg kick. Uh, Jones seemed to be kicking out a lot. And then Jones backed him up into the cage. They touched hands. Joan grabs Smith's leg, I think. He kneed him. 
Anthony looked gassed, and then Jones started beating him against the cage. So from my overview, from how I was watching the fight, that uh, they both kept distance. Anthony always, uh, anyone who fights John Jones always looks a bit smaller to me. The only guy who doesn't look as small is Alexander Gustafson, so Anthony looked a bit small to me, but he looked game and didn't look scared, nothing like that. Uh, I saw a lot of leg kicks, and then towards the middle and end of the fight, Jones kept putting him up against the cage, and he kept going like this to him. And so, of course, he heard the boos. I heard the boos, which was terrible because it just is. But fans sort of want to see a give one, take one fight all the time. It doesn't work like that. But I didn't like the fact that he had him up the cage like that. I watched another fight, uh, I think a little later in that day, and I realized that it's perfectly fair to do something like that. But it was like grinding him up against the cage. I mean, he must have been so bruised. I was worried about internal injuries on Mr. Jones there. Uh, you know, I wish I could make some jokes a la Men in Black, like Mr. Smith and Mr. Jones. It wasn't a fun fight to watch. Sometimes, um, you know, you have to stay away from the cult of personality when it comes to fighting because all, all of them are giving their best. They're all good. Um, but like in life, sometimes you have an antipathy towards somebody and you don't know why. However, John Jones, he's, and you know, I. I I doubt that he's going to come rampaging the studio and beat here up on Shorty. But um, he's a steroid cheater and I guess an eye gouger or whatever. But um, I don't like his style of fighting. Uh, it's just me. But he's a great fighter and probably one of the greatest fighters of all time. Unfortunately, uh, the way that he's been popped for steroids has... Um, not, um, people won't, don't want to consider him GOAT, greatest of all time, because of that. However, um, Chael and Wanderlei have also popped for uh, steroids, but I don't think it was because they actually took them. I think it was just because some protein shake that they were drinking. That's just me, okay? So at any rate, um, it was an unpleasant fight to watch, and I don't know if I have the stomach to watch a lot of fights. I, I, love, I love watching other people talk about breakdowns. I got a crush on a couple of these guys, even though they're married. Um, it's just a fascinating sport. It's a very, it's a pure sport. There are facets, facets of it that scare me. I don't really think I could take a punch, and I kind of frown on fans who will never get into the octagon, and they expect these guys to turn cartwheels all day and all night, and it just doesn't work out like that. So um, that's that fight. I guess he kept kneeing, John Jones kept kneeing Anthony Smith, kneeing him, kneeing him, and then um, um, he kept pushing him against the cage, and Dominic Cruz was, voicing over the fight, and when he, when he was talking, I, would, I was trying to, I, I turn up the sound, you know, because I watched it after it happened. What a great, uh, I call him the doctor. He's, he's got a PhD, um, Dominic Cruz is brilliant. He was saying, Smith looks great. People were booing 13 minutes in the fight. Um, Dominic was saying that he knew that all that grinding was hurting him. And then um, the pressure, I can't read what I'm looking at, but I guess there was more booing. You know, the fans weren't satisfied or whatever. But for me as a, as a fan watching the fight, I, satisfied isn't the word. I was in discomfort and um, um, I think that when I am going to do pay-per-view for a fight, it's going to be watching Mr. Tony Ferguson. Uh, and that's just me. But until then, I'm, I'll, I'll watch these fights taped and I'll be able to play them back and, and study them a little bit more. So that's, that's it for that. I just want to practice doing some breakdowns because um, all my MMA professors on YouTube are really, really good at it. 
um, especially weasel there. But mixed molly whoppery, krennac, mind smash, alpaca thesaurus, uh, the bad guy, Chael Sonnen, Michael Bisping's um, Believe You Me. Those guys, uh, they teach me a lot uh, f for a novice and they give their worldview of it. I also want to say that um, not a lot of people, uh, well, uh, when I first would watch Joe Rogan's show, I wasn't really into it, but I'm realizing that he's got a really open mind um, on subjects, and he's winning me over with his style. This sport is kind of on a subjective plateau. Uh, it's hard to be objective. You, I like Michael Vick. A lot of people don't like him. I think he's, uh, I've never seen him win a fight, but I think he's a good fighter. And so I know why people probably envy Mr. Joe Rogan because he's, he's trained as a fighter. I don't know what belt he has, but he gets to hang out with all these great fighters and talk to them all day about all this different stuff. So right on for him. I, you know, it, people, he does a good job in his own way. Not everyone might, like, might not like his style. I um, tend to gravitate towards Alpaca Thesaurus who is really funny, and his references are, what you call it, oblique, more like um, uh, arcane. You really have to pay close attention to what he's talking about. Okay, so on that note, let's just do a quick, um, do a weight division review really quickly, all right? I wanna go into the pound for pound rankings with fighters today because um, they're all different weights, but let's just look at the list as of, I think, February 2nd, February 10th. I want to say February 10th, 2019. I've got 2018 down here, so cross my fingers. All right, so let's go into it. Daniel Cormier is number one. John Jones is number two. Khabib Namomagadoff is number three. Max Holloway is number four. Henry Cejudo is number five. Amanda Nunes is number six. TJ Dillashaw is number seven. Uh, Kamau Usman is number eight. Conor McGregor is number nine. Stipe Miocic is number 10. Robert Whitaker is number 11. Tony Ferguson is number 12. Tyrone Woodley is number 13. Rose Namanunas is number 14. And Chris Cyborg is number 15. What a list, okay? What an incredible list. All right, so now, and those are the champs. Those are champs, okay? So now we'll go to, um, oh, well, let's, let's do what champ, where the champ uh, in their weight class. Flyweight, Henry Chizudo. Bantamweight is vacant at the moment, and I think that they're thinking about getting rid of it. Featherweight champ is Max Holloway. Lightweight champ is Khabib Namogadoff. Welterweight champ is Kamo Usman. Middleweight champ is Robert Whitaker. Light heavyweight champ is John Jones. And the heavyweight champ is Daniel Cormier. Uh, women's strawweight champ is Rose Namanunas. Women's flyweight is Valentino Shevneko. And women's bantamweight is Amanda Nunes. Uh, light heavyweight number two is Alexander Gustafsson. Women's strawweight number two is Joanna Jasic. And number 10, Carla Esperanza. Women's bantamweight number two is Holly Holm. All right, now we'll quickly go into the poundage. Heavyweight is 265 pounds, 120 kilograms. Light heavyweights are 205 pounds, 93 kilograms. Middleweights are 185, 84 kilograms. Welterweights are at 170 pounds, 77 kilograms. Lightweights, 155 pounds. Oh, pardon me. Lightweights, 155 pounds, 70 kilograms. Bantam weight is 135 pounds, 61 kilograms. Fly weights are at 125 pounds, 56 kilograms. Women featherweights. 145 pounds, 65 kilograms. Women's bantamweight, 135 pounds, 61 kilograms. Women's flyweight, 125 pounds, 56 kilograms. Women's straw weight, 115 pounds, 52 kilograms. I'm basically what you call straw weight, 
but um, I go from 115. Sometimes I hit 119, but I would have a really hard time uh, keeping it at 115 because uh, I almost go almost to 120, but I can't make fly weight either, 125, so I get pummeled regardless. So um, I think that that's it for Octagon St. Laveau today. I'm your hostess, Betty St. Laveau. I hope that you've enjoyed our quick walk around the octagon, and um, I think that there's some ex excellent, exciting fights coming up. My year anniversary is, is coming up of being entranced by the sport. It's been, quite, uh, it's been quite a learning experience. I still have a lot to learn, and I might even take a self-defense class at some point this year, so you never know. Until then, everybody, um, if you're not an M&A, that's okay. Love any, each other anyway. Have a good night. Bye.